WCLN 1170 Radio and Cable Channel 16 are pleased to present We Should Know, hosted by J.W. Simmons, an upbeat, informative look at people, places, and issues facing our community. This education-based analysis of issues will remain positive and informative as we consider closely what we should know. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We should know it's on there. I want to thank you for being with us today. We're coming to you from Star Communications Channel 16, Cable Channel 16, also WCLN Radio out of Clinton, North Carolina, summation in the Sampson Weekly newspaper. We appreciate you every week sitting down and talking to folks with us about things that's important for you, about information that you may not only be interested in, but you may just want to pass on to somebody else. Put it on your Facebook account. Let folks know what's going on. And it's happening right around you, right here in this area. Ray Jordan is the executive director of the Clinton Sampson Agra Exhibition Center. Correct. Is that correct? That's yes, correct, I think. J. And uh, also, you're the former uh, president of the Arts Council here, now serve on that board. Uh, very much involved in a lot of community activities. Uh, Ray, I want to kind of step back in, in your introduction here a little bit, and it's been some time, in fact, it was last year since we had a conversation. Since now and then, um, you've been introduced to some new skills, and one of those is um, coordination and distribution of products and services <laughs> as a result of Hurricane Florence. Yep, uh, J.W., I tell you, uh, last fall when the hurricane came through, um, the Expo Center and, and, and its staff and then uh, several other departments, recreation, planning and zoning, uh, and some others, we were uh, assigned to what's called central receiving and distribution. And during that time, uh, we opened the Expo Center up and we had, uh, we received all the items that came in from FEMA, from Red Cross and all, uh, whether it be water, food, uh, a multitude of different type uh, products and things that we then distribute across the county. Um, we had a really, really good team that worked with us. Uh, they were, that, that team stayed together 11 days for 24 hours a day for 11 days. Uh, I can't say enough uh, good about all the ones that came in and worked and, and, and put forth for, to, to help the folks for across the county. Um, it was, um, and, and one thing too is, is for those of you listening out there that happened to come by the Expo Center during that week, we actually had Duke Energy was set up as a staging area at the Expo Center, and they, we had approximately 225 line workers and their support staff that were there for uh, seven days or eight days and seven nights uh, that stayed with us and uh, while they were restoring power. Uh, in their service area across the county. And uh, so it was quite a spectacle mm -hmm. uh, with all the things that were going on. And uh, But I tell you, it's, um, there was a, I can't say enough about the people of the county as uh, people wanting to donate things and come by and the number of people that when we went out that were, that were, uh, their houses may have been flooded or whatever they, the, they just the had problem, nowhere to go. Whatever somehow. the problem they had, but but the the thing was that the uh, the very positive attitudes that everybody had, while everyone was trying to serve. So it was really it was really good and really rewarding. And, and then during that time, also you got a lot of input and products coming in from out of state, from what I can understand. And that that was a, a lot of people have mentioned to me how amazing it was that uh, people from other states coming in with literally huge tractor trailer loads. Of, of products that may be needed, uh, it could be civic clubs and that kind of thing. You had to intake and export that in, in some kind of a proper, effective way. Yep. Um, Did that increase your skill level or what? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> thank goodness I used to be in the fertilizer and chemical business, so receiving and distributing items weren't so bad. But, yeah. But uh, but yes, there were there was a tremendous amount of items and. Uh, um, um, but you know how it was prioritized back through the emergency operations center is to you know we we pr would provide them with the inventory what we had and what we received and it was kept up to date, and then we would uh, yeah. distribute those items as needed or where needed throughout the county. One of the things that Ray, that you mentioned that I I have mentioned on this show uh, before is is the dedication of the county employees and I. You know, I've, having known and know a lot of those folks, and some of them has been on this show, it's like I look at it and I just think how blessed we are to have people that are willing to give of themselves 
And what you talked about, folks just literally living there. Yep. And some of them almost actually because of health reasons, I understand it was one particular person that asked, well, you need to just go home and rest, and they refused to leave. Right. Um, what? I mean, that's humble. that says a lot for the spirit of people yeah. in this area. I, I, I really can't say enough about those that, that I worked with during that storm. Uh, we did have someone that was assigned to us that actually fell while we were unloading a trailer. and. Um, I knew they had hurt their back and uh, they weren't feeling the best in the world. Um, and I, and it was kind of a, a time where we had a little bit of a break. Mm -hmm. And I said, look, go home, sleep in your bed at night, come back tomorrow. Uh, I left and went to take a shower, come back, and they're sitting down at the table with the rest of the crowd having, we were eating. And I said, what are you doing back? And the person said, he said, uh, he said, I, I couldn't leave y'all behind and not do my part. That's that's tremendous. That's, yeah. that's rich team spirit uh, that everybody's got to be proud of. And for everybody listening, these are the folks that are working for you each and every day right, right. here in this county. And the thing is, you know, there was, there was, I can name you several of the county employees that whose houses were underwater, uh, where we, we, we would ride by on the way somewhere and I knew where someone mm -hmm. lived and we would go through, you know, in a boat, mm -hmm. and you'd see their houses in order, yet they're out serving somewhere else in another part and of the county. And put their own personal needs aside. Right. It, it, uh, it goes beyond uh, uh, understanding, but it also goes to a point of a lesson. Right. And, and I think it's uh, that, old, uh, that rotary uh, standard that we kind of recite each week called service above self. That's right. That's exactly right. I mean, you know, it's, you can say, I mean, it's, it's part of our uh, job mm -hmm. that if the storm comes that we as county employees we work mm -hmm. but I can't tell you how many people that uh, that went I mean way beyond mm -hmm. uh, what's expected and you know and it's I remember the very first year I worked for the county which I'm not going to tell you how long that's been <laughs> uh, a I was at the 911 center or the emergency operations center and there was a, a person there answering calls and as I Left, well, as actually as I came in, someone said to me that this person's house, a tree had fallen across the house, and and I knew the person. Um, I walked back there where they were, and I said, "Look, if there's anything we do, let us know how, if we can help you." And and she, the lady, she said, "Is the trees on it? There's nothing I can do about it right now, and let's keep working." I meant, you know, and there she was. Uh, her house was basically destroyed. Yeah. Uh, but she kept on doing the job and and representing the county. That's uh, that that is uh, to me a, a sense of richness in the quality of people right. and the quality of of uh, if you have to sell this area of the state and Sampson and surrounding counties, uh, that's the biggest selling point I think you can put forward. If you want to be around people that care about each other, that are willing to come together in the hardest times and stand with people. Uh, I would just say to folks out there looking at economics and other things, there's a lot of indicators, but that should be the first right. one they should be thinking about. You know, we had a, there was a group of ladies in, uh, that, that were calling uh, once the Duke Energy team was mobilized on our site. Mm -hmm. There was a, the people were calling wanting to help. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you have to delay telling someone how you can help because it's all moving so fast that you don't know how to do it and or not that you don't know how to do it that you're doing it fairly and you're you're, you're right. doing things the way you should and 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 you're not getting things as you can't utilize mm -hmm. and so sometimes people are you know like why well, you do you mean you don't need my help no we need your help but let us let us make sure what it is but anyway this group of ladies kept calling and when they found out we had all these line workers there and they said is there anything we can do and uh, one of the things that, that, that popped up was, um, you know, we had a washer and dryer in the building. Mm -hmm. But, you know, 225 people through a regular washer and dryer is a lot of clothes That's to wash. That's running a lot of, <laughs> lot of uh, washer and dryers through there, man. And so th there was a team of ladies and, uh, and, you know, and churches and others that came together. They came, picked up clothes, took them out, washed them, brought them back, folded uh, for these uh, line workers that were there. And... At one point, there was a group um, that came in and brought in uh, like uh, toiletries and T-shirts mm -hmm. and socks and all these things that where everyone that was working there mm -hmm. could get a fresh um, 
change of clothes or new bar of soap, or washcloth, all these things, and that was all donated. And they came in, they set it up, and they distributed it and took that part away from us. So that was a, you know, people coming to the table to help out. And that's a huge chunk when you think about it. And it's one of those things that you just mentioned that the average person wouldn't have thought of or wouldn't even known about unless you're now telling them about it. They wouldn't have never seen that happen in the background. We had a line worker that was funny. He, uh, his truck came in. You know, they're all on these big trucks. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the guy came in the door. And I noticed when he was walking up to the front of Prestige Hall, I could see water running out of his suitcase. And his suitcase had happened to be up under in the storage bin on the side of the truck. And where the water had come up around the truck while they were working on the power had flooded all of his clothes. And so, you know, we had, we, that was one of the first ones we had to, to deal with, cleaning his clothes. But. And, you know, Ray, you, you mentioned uh, uh, Duke Progress. I recall seeing some uh, photos of, of one of the um, uh, electric cooperatives in the southern part of the county that was actually waiting uh, above the waste water. Mm -hmm. Uh, in their on their body trying to repair power lines, and I thought, I mean, that's really pushing it. When your water is above your waist, you're you're treading that water to try to get power mm -hmm. to homes, as you indicated a while ago. It was just literally islands. Well, you know, <clears throat> there there was there was uh, a lot of water, uh, you know, and also at the Expo Center we had the Coast Guard there, we had wildlife resources, we were assigned National Guard units to help, and just so many people came together and. Um, you know, uh, the uh, the citizens of the county should really be proud of uh, of what all happened to support our, you know the folks across the county, and uh, I can't say enough good about them all. Well, it it, it goes it goes to a uh, a factor of, and I, I want to kind of follow up on this um, when we come back from break just a little bit. I don't want to spend too much time because we've got a lot of other stuff to talk about, but I want to kind of get an idea from your perspective of reflecting back what what have you learned because this kind of event is being predicted as to be kind of at least every other year and it would be interesting folks I think to discover well, what would be done different next time what have you learned from this time and that kind of thing we'll talk about it when we come back from break ladies and gentlemen thank you for being with us we're talking with Ray Jordan executive director of the Arts Council and executive director of a lot of things here going on in Sampson County call a friend stay tuned Interesting show today. We'll be back in a moment. Experiencing slow internet? If you have a fast internet package, the problem is most likely your wireless router. With more devices using Wi-Fi, your wireless router may not be able to deliver the speed and coverage you need. We now have the leading solution to enhance your internet experience. Using small devices in a mesh network, these Wi-Fi appliances cover just about any size home so that all your devices can operate to their fullest potential. Whole home Wi-Fi from Star Communications. Get the most out of your internet connection. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Thank you for being with us. Uh, remember, continue to send us your suggestions, recommendations, comments about shows we've had, suggestions about shows upcoming to we should know edu at gmail.com. We should know edu at gmail.com. I always like to look at those and see if we can put something together, maybe to help not only information that you'd like to know about, but oftentimes a lot of other folks need to know that information as well. Uh, one of those people that seem to be involved in a lot of stuff is Ray Jordan, Executive Director of the Clinton Sampson Agri Exhibition Center. Ray, when you took that job, you probably didn't know you were going to be involved in all these things to include <laughs> hurricanes and so forth. But um, it, it did come to that. Um, from what I've been told, was a tremendous job. And the experience of that has, has led you to probably think about and maybe rethink some things. What, if, what do you look back at now and think, well, you know, here's some things I've learned. Well, J.W., one of the things that, that has uh, occurred as a, as a result of the of actually Matthew, Florence, and the last couple storms we've had is that the county has undergone an entire uh, review of its um, emergency operations. And uh, now this is, uh, I've worked for the county a long time, <clears throat> and this is one of the things that's probably had the most serious attention that, you know, that I've worked with. I mean, it's, it's all hands on board, uh, or all hands on deck, and uh, there's been a, a, a months and months and months of review, anal analyzing, analyzing what has what occurred, what could be done better. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and I'm sure you've talked with Ronald Bass with EMS and Susan Holder with the 
it with the county and a county manager. But uh, the emergency operations plan of the county is is being updated, uh, and as a result, you know, it's uh, the county manager and, and the board of commissioners want to empower the folks that work for us for the county to um, be able to make decisions and, and do their jobs. And so, this every there's been a whole. Uh, a great amount of time put on putting together operating guidelines as to how we would handle situations and and then also in in trying to to prepare for the next storm mm -hmm. uh, and and the things that you need to have on hand that you know to function um, and uh, you know now looks and this Florence was bad but you think about had had that storm come in at a category four or five as they were predicting, um, you know, as bad as it was for us here then, what would it have been had we had that kind of catastrophic catastrophic event? Absolutely, because we were talking primarily about flooding, but as you said, if it had come in at 120, 125 mile an hour winds, uh, it would have been total devastation right. in many areas. And it would have been a very, I mean, there's a lot of folks across the county that, that are going to take a long time to fully recover. Mm -hmm. But it, but overall, the recovery has is going very well and has happened very well. Mm -hmm. But you're still going to have things that's going to take a lot of time. You know, so you think about had, had we had a Severe storm. I mean, I mean, talking about a severe impact. If we had a hurricane hazel. Yeah, hurricane hazel. Then you're talking about a whole different thing of people being displaced for longer periods and having shelters open longer, uh, and it becomes very taxing on 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 the manpower that the county has. And you know, resources come in, but uh, you know, it's kind of uh, someone said in one of the meetings we're in. You know, it's things come when it's. When the when the storm comes and it's gone, people come in, they're gone, mm -hmm. you know, they're out. But the 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 amount of time it takes to recover and to get people back to normal, mm -hmm. uh, had it been a hurricane hazel, that time period would have been extended to such a degree. You take like in Jacksonville where schools didn't open for you know a month and a half later, uh, those kind of things. That, that all that that brings with it. So uh, I'm very proud that uh, that of all the work that's been done by a lot of people to help the county uh, learn from what happened and, and the, you know, the county manager started with seeking input from all the players, mm -hmm. uh, the citizens and the employees and those that worked from the part from our partners. Um, and so uh, there's been a lot learned uh, and there, there's going to be an ongoing uh, um, effort made that where we are continually working to be prepared for the next event mm -hmm. uh, and how uh, how we how we respond um, you know and 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 hopefully in, in a manner or two that will not burden you know empl like I hate to say employees but but wear out your staff that's Absolutely. working you know Absolutely. so you know that there's been a lot there's a lot being done to work towards you know, an event such as Florence, mm -hmm. but however, something if something come worse, mm -hmm. as to how we would keep our sustainability going. And so, I mean, I, I, there's been a lot of work done, and and it, I, you you can say a lot of work to somebody, and they're like, "What does that mean?" Yeah. But now there has been a lot of thought, a lot of consideration, and a lot of time put in to to trying to to make sure that you know you're never going to prepare for everything. Mm -hmm. But but working to 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 make it where the the county has the resources it needs, where the employees that are working those storms and shelters or whatever point it may be have the things that they need to be able to do their job and to be able to look after folks in time of distress. I think one of the things is that I heard somebody say we were talking about it um, some months ago, right after and, and during the recovery piece uh, with FEMA and Small Business Administration and others. Is there's a sense of uh, resiliency here that uh, not only Sampson County but Eastern North Carolina that that folks are determined we're going to make this work. We're determined we're going to get through this. Those are the kinds of things that it begs that question of interoperability between jurisdictions. Do, do you see going forward futuristically more interoperability between counties, uh, between local governments, and those kinds of things where there's, I guess, more than, it's just more than 
the uh, Civic Center is just more than what's going on, in, but it expands to Fayetteville. It expands to Jacksonville, Arkansas County. It expands to Pender and all these other counties. You know, any time, you know, the times that I have had opportunity to work for during a storm, I mean, there's always been outside resources available and, and people, and, and when I say resources, not only goods and items, but people to come in and help. Um, and you know, and that's I think that's going to be a, a for you know, mm -hmm. kind of a it's a given that those things, those people are going to step forward, um, and be able to uh, to to help in any way possible. Um, we've we've really got a good team, um, and uh, there's been a lot learned, um, and I think that as we go forward, um, you know, I, I I I would I would say that probably. The um, if you talk to a lot of those folks that were impacted that were being served during the storm, you know, sure there was some discomforts and some minor having to wait for this or that, but overall, uh, I think people were should be very pleased with what was done and how it was how they were served and uh, and tried to and being treated fairly and, and as they should be. You know? yeah. So. I I think one of the things too is, is I look at the EOP, the Emergency Operation Plan, and one of the things I'm seeing happening there is that there's a possibility of having some uh, some of these shelter areas uh, throughout the county to have alternative power sources. Right. Was that ever a problem at the Civic Center? Is that something that's already existing? Or? Well, at the Expo Center, which is is designated as the central receiving and distribution point for the county, uh, we 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 don't have a backup power there currently. Um, we are. Uh, Fortunately, we you know we were with only without power for about a day mm -hmm. at the expo center. Uh, you know we're close to the major right. substations, and so it's you know we were and plus with Duke Energy <laughs> being with us, you know yeah. they were you know, they were pretty much yeah. they, they were working to get us up to get that going. Get that yeah. going. Uh, so we were up pretty fast. Um, there is need for that. Um, you know have. Should we had had a severe event with a lot of wind, a lot of power out? I mean, worse than what we had, you know, generation would have been very important. Um, but at the shelters, um, you know, uh, some of the schools that are used as shelters have generators. Some of them have smaller generators. But I know that the county is going to be working towards uh, making the shelters or getting it where the shelters have a proper uh, generation generator sizes that where you can run. Uh, and have power and lights. Uh, you know, um, it's one thing if you can keep the lights on and, and you know, like for example, I was just, mm -hmm. I remember we when during the storm we we went out and picked up this the cases of these uh, yard lights, mm -hmm. that uh, solar power lights, mm -hmm. and I was like when they brought them in, I'm like, what are we doing all these yard lights? Yeah. And so anyway, we put them outside during the day. We would charge them, so they would charge, and we'd tape them in the bathrooms at night where folks could see how to get to the restroom. So, uh, but, but having power at the schools where there's going to be a shelter is important, so, you know, for, for cooking, for communication, for, for trying to keep, you know, a lot of times it's in a gym or in classrooms and, and they're, they're, most of them don't have open windows so that you can have um, have power in there to, to, to keep it, at least keep the air moving if nothing else, mm -hmm. you know. Um, you know, if, if you can keep people fed, and you can keep people uh, some lights on. It's it makes it a lot better. But you know, being in the dark and you know not being able to have a meal and things like that, that that really makes it tough on some folks. Resources, uh, especially given the size of this storm, and as you said, if you look forward in some of the predictability studies that's being done with climate and climate change. Uh, we could be facing some pretty horrific possibilities, not only here but anywhere on the eastern seaboard. So, so as we look at that, and I'm sure the EOP is, has addressed that as, as it moves forward, do you encourage people to call and say, well, here's an idea I had, or here's something that you might want to think about, or have you gotten beyond that stage? Well, no, no. I, I, I think at any time uh, that, uh, you know, Again, my and me staying in my work lane, normal work lane, is to manage the expo center, yeah. and uh, and I wouldn't dare step in Ronald Bass's shoes, but it, it, I know that the county is very receptive to input, mm -hmm. um, and if someone should have a comment or a suggestion on how to improve storm response, uh, they should reach out to Susan Holder with the county, 
they should reach out to Ronald Bass with EMS or the county manager or the commissioners. Well, if it's something to do with distribution, they can call you. That's right. Call so me. we're going to take a, a break and we'll come back and we're going. I want to jump right into a lot of exciting activities coming up here uh, for spring in 2019 in the city of Clinton. So, folks, stay tuned. Uh, next uh, segment, a couple of segments, we're going to talk about a lot of things you need to know coming up just right around the corner that's exciting you want to get involved in and we'll literally give you some uh, opportunities for entertainment that maybe would not be available for we'll be right back you come out to replace a bad sensor and that has a five-year commitment to my contract and you don't tell me here's your sign switch to the sign that's keeping home secure and customers happy all over the area security from star communications we pride ourselves on fair pricing and quick friendly service every time Somebody try to break into this place? Security from Star Communications. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We should know it's on the air. We're coming to you from WCLN. We're coming to you from Star Communications Channel 16. We're also coming to you in print format from the Samson Weekly newspaper. Look at us on Channel 16. Pick up the show every Tuesday at uh, 2.30, each and every Tuesday. Been going on now for close to eight years, maybe a little over eight years. Uh, hopefully been bringing some information from people in the field that is there, been there, done that, can tell you about it, uh, and, and has the, the kinds of things that not only do you need to know, but uh, you maybe get a little, a little bit excited about and say, it is springtime and something's happening in the city of Clinton, right? That's what's happening here. And um, it, it amazes me when I, and in fact, off air, I asked you the question, uh, how long has Live After Five been going on? And you might be right, it might be close to seven years. Yep. I think we're, that when I, this is the seventh season for the Live After Five this year. Um, you know, what started as a, a, a local business person coming to the uh, Arts Council, asking about could we have some type of summer concerts mm -hmm. and that's how it began um, and then so the Alive After Five committee was formed as a committee of the Arts Council um, and then the city of Clinton and the county of Sampson joined as partners in helping us to be able to present it as, as presenting partners and then JW for the past seven years including this year we've had close to a hundred anywhere from a hundred and ten to a hundred and thirty sponsors of varying uh, dollar amounts from all across the county and some from outside the county. Uh, but it's been a very good series. Uh, we, it's, we average probably close to 5,000 people for the season. Uh, and they, the, the good part of it is it's a, a good clean community activity or event, concerts that folks can come out and bring their family, bring their um, kids to and, uh, and sit, have good entertainment for a couple hours. And it's put on in free because of all the sponsors. And I think one of the things that, that I want to get into is that when I look at the the kind of entertainment we're talking about, these are the kinds of, of bands that would literally cost you, in some cases, $50, $75 a person just to get in the building to hear these bands. Here they are free, and all you got to do is bring a lawn chair right. and sit down, enjoy yourself, and there's this kind of surrounded by vendors uh, right. of everything from uh, pork skins to whatever you can imagine, uh, and, and it just turns it into this nice, uh, and, and it's safe. The, the environment is safe. So the first band, May 16th, is, is called Spare Change. I know that has to ring a bell with a lot of folks, but it also rings a bell because I think about the, the top 40 hits. I think about classic rock. I think about, you know, beach, country, you name it. They, it, it it's amazing at the latitude and, and the movement of that band. Right. Well, Spare Change is a really fun party band. Uh, yeah. they, 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 as you said, they perform a wide variety of, of musical uh, types uh, during their concerts, and uh, and they're, they're just a lot of energy on stage and a lot of fun. Jordan Rouse is the one is the one that we deal with with the band, and I've I've known Jordan for probably about ten years, and and they they're probably one of my favorite mm -hmm. all time party bands. Uh, 
They put on a great concert, and um, and they're just it's just fun. They're fun people to hang out with. And if you if you come uh, to see Spare Change, be prepared because that's when I see a lot of people going up in front of the stage. You'll see line dancing, choreographic dancing. They play that kind of music that just pulls you in if you're that kind of person. And and you just see all kinds of folks getting up, and you're going, wow, you know, I didn't know you could do that. And it's different people that you know from this area. And of course, I noticed a lot of people coming in from other counties now taking advantage of these kinds of things. Well, that's one good thing, too, is a part of the Live After Five is, you know, we're, we, it, when it was designed, it was, you know, obviously began to be of a benefit to the citizens of the county. And, uh, but, you know, one of the, the very good positives from it is that we do have a lot of folks that come from outside the county. And, uh, and as you know, is when folks come in from outside the county into our county, they're generally going to spend some money. And sometimes they'll spend a night. Yep. Uh, and uh, I know that uh, last year, I know we had folks from every county that touches Sampson County, surrounding counties, and we had some as far off as Rocky Mount. It came Absolutely. out to, to some of our concerts in Wilmington. So uh, it's, it's a good uh, event for our local community. Uh, it's good for, for our businesses and, you know, that people coming into town. Uh, and, and then like our food vendors and things we have at Live After Five, Folks come in there. They can buy a sandwich, barbecue sandwich. They can uh, buy some of Mr. Ingram's famous pork skins, and mm -hmm. um, and it's just a good time. And, and and then a lot of times after the concerts are over, folks will go out to a restaurant downtown or somewhere in town, and uh, and then, and that contributes to the economic impact of the community. Well, twelve or fifteen hundred people that that come in, either uh, come in or they're from the area, it does bring them into downtown, and that kind of suggests to me that we're looking at May sixteenth, which is right around the corner for this first event, and we're talking at six p.m. Uh, you start seeing folks show up as early as five and five thirty. The people will start wandering in, and by seven o'clock, it's packed. It's a packed house right. as far as that right in front of the stage, and it's amazing to just kind of look around and go, where did all these people come from? Yep. Well, one of the things I guess we need to make sure is that folks understand where it is and what's going on. Absolutely. Let's talk about so, that. And, and why was that site picked from the beginning as a good site there on Lisbon Street? Well, the, the Alive After Concerts are all held at the Clinton City Market downtown, mm -hmm. which is 215 at Lisbon Street. Lisbon Street. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we started looking at uh, trying to find where to have a concert, you know, we obviously we had to have power. We needed restrooms. Uh, and where could we put a stage? Uh, and uh, with the access to the city market, we were able to have our sponsor's reception under the market, so it made sense for us to be there. Mm -hmm. uh, we rent a stage each concert and bring it in and put it up for the bands. Um, and we, have, we generally will have 10, eight to 10 vendors per, each, per event, mm -hmm. and that could be either our food vendors or concession vendors. Uh, and this year we're having uh, Simply Delicious, um, we're having uh, uh, um, Southern Smoke Barbecue will be on hand, uh, and we'll have uh, uh, the snow cone, uh, snow, uh, snow cone company is coming back with us, as well as Dupin Winery. Mm -hmm. uh, so those are the concession vendors, and then we always have some of our major sponsors that come out, and they, they, they'll set up and, and let folks know what kind of services they offer, what, what uh, more about their business. So yeah, those are opportunities for folks to visit uh, and do that. But that's where that's how it started and where we wound up. Um, one of the things that, were, that has been added for this season, which is totally uh, going to be a, a, a new deal for us, for the Live After Five committee, is that, you know, as the committee was sitting around, we were trying to think, okay, now how can we, what can we do to add something to the same old? Mm -hmm. So as we talked about it, we, we said, you know, is there, is there nonprofits in the community that we might could partner with that where we could benefit them, they would benefit us, and it'd be a, where it would be a win-win for everyone. Mm -hmm. So um, this year, starting with the second concert in June, we'll be having several, uh, I'm going to talk about the three groups that are or the organizations that we're going to be working with. One is the, the uh, Christian Food Bank from Salemburg. Mm -hmm. uh, they will be, I, and I can't, J.D., I can't remember which event, uh, who's going to be at what date, but mm -hmm. we will let everyone know. Mm -hmm. But the, that this particular, for this event that the Christian Food Bank, Salemburg Food Bank will be at, 
we'll, that we'll be uh, promoting and, and asking and encouraging those that come out to the concert to bring canned food or non-perishable items to support them. It'll give the organization time to let folks know about them and what they do and who they serve. Mm -hmm. They serve about 12,000 people last year in the county uh, by providing groceries to, throughout the year. Mm -hmm. And then we're having the uh, uh, the Backpack Buddies program. Mm -hmm. uh, that that group will will come out, and what we'll be doing there is the Backpack Buddies is a program within the schools, and it's not in all the schools, but it's in the majority of them where that are kids that may uh, not have uh, opportunity for full nourishment on the weekends and things, and so they're sent home what they call backpack kits mm -hmm. and they, where it might have food and different items in there that these children can use. So we're partnering with that group to come in and we'll be soliciting specific items that will be used in that program as they go throughout the school year. A lot of churches support that as well. A lot of churches well. support that as well. So folks will be able to learn about that. Uh, and the last, I know the last event is going to be the uh, the chamber coat closet. Mm -hmm. You know, for 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 several years, the, the Clinton Sampson Chamber has uh, sponsored their coat closet, and uh, Star Communications has worked with them on that mm -hmm. as far as distribution and warehouse space, uh, and. For that event, we're going to encourage folks. That'll be kind of the kickoff to the season for folks to bring their coats out, uh, gently, gently used or or new, and uh, they can donate those. And then the, the chamber will distribute those out in the winter during the winter months. So that's a that's a, something that's new for us this year. And uh, and I think that the uh, my hope is that each organization will greatly benefit from being there. Uh, not only in the sense of uh, gathering items for their for what they're supporting, but for folks to become aware about what they're doing uh, throughout the county. Mm -hmm. and, and there's a tremendous amount of people that, uh, when I look back at each one of those uh, organizations that has a, a constituency group that has been moving forward with them over the past few years, so we would encourage as well, I'm sure those people that have been supporting those folks to come out and just yeah. Bring, again, bring your lawn chairs, sit down, listen, relax, uh, take a look at the bands, listen to the bands and those kinds of things. Meet a lot of people that you know are there already, so that'll add to the, the, to the volume of people that we're trying to get to come out just to enjoy. Well, one thing about Live After Five is for everybody to keep in mind, it's free to the public. Mm -hmm. So you can have a great night of entertainment, have a lot of fun. And you know, Jay Debbie, I think probably, prob probably as much as the bands, as people enjoy the bands, is they enjoy the fellowship. They do. Uh, there's, I mean, you if you stand in one spot and, and watch the crowd, you'll just see group after group after group having conversations and catching up and renewing friendships and making new ones. Smiling faces. Yep. We're going to take a break. Uh, we're going to come back, and I want to kind of get into some of the bands and. Um, maybe a, a little bit about some of their history because you've got some award-winning bands and I want to make sure people understand uh, the title of those bands and, and the fact that they're just not an ordinary band that you've pulled up on the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back in a moment. We're going to be talking more about Live After Five 2019 right here on Lisbon Street. Uh, we ask you to call a friend. Stay tuned. We'll be back in one moment. To get the most out of your electronic devices, you need a strong internet connection and a protected home Wi-Fi network. You need high-speed internet from Star. Star has the fastest, most affordable high-speed internet service available for all your devices. We have no long-term contracts or high-pressure sales. Our service speaks for itself, and switching is hassle-free. We take care of everything with free installation from a local company. High-speed internet from Star. Internet at the speed of life. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We're talking about Live After Five, City of Clinton, Downtown Clinton. We're talking with Ray Jordan, Executive Director of Clinton Sampson Chamber, excuse me, Clinton Sampson Agra Exhibition Center, which the Chamber is located in that facility. The Chamber supports this Live After Five event. The City of Clinton supports it. The County of Sampson, the Sampson County uh, Arts Council supports it as well. Uh, it's taken off and run, uh, I think, tremendously for a few years. You, are you still in that situation to to say to folks, look, if you want to be a part of this, you can still be a sponsor. If you want to donate and say, look, I, I just want to, I just want to write a check and it would go to the Arts Council. Is that a tax deductible thing, or how does that work? It is. The Alive After Five is a committee of the Arts Council. <coughs> Excuse me, and um, 
and uh, there's roughly 100 sponsors. You can still sponsor if you'd like to become a sponsor. You can find out more at Live After Five. ClintonNC.com. And you could just actually Google uh, Live After 5 2019 Clinton, North Carolina, and it'll bring up that website. Just click on it, and everything is right there. Right. And um, so uh, we're, st we're still accepting sponsors through this. We're actually through the end of the day Monday mm -hmm. <coughs> for the season in order to be able to have our signs and posters and all printed. <coughs> Excuse me, J.W. <coughs> and, um, but <coughs> like I said, we have about 100 sponsors, and... Um, Sponsorship levels begin at 250 and they go up. We've got sponsors that contribute uh, in excess of $10,000. <clears> but we have a lion's share of our sponsors at 250 mm -hmm. But for $250, they get tickets to sponsor receptions and some special events, perks, T-shirts, and things. And so it's a really good time. And, uh, and we've got a really, really fun lineup for us this year. And as we talked about a little earlier, we're starting out with Spare Change, mm -hmm. who is one of the the uh, most fun party band you'll, you'll, you'll see. Uh, next coming up is uh, for, for uh, this is a, a, well, a well known name oh, a, a, around here is Jim Quick and Coastline. Did I hear that he may be leaving this area, right? Well, that's, that's the, uh, this is supposed, supposedly the farewell tour for Jim Quick and Coastline uh, before they moved to Nashville. Wow. Uh, so this, this, the, the, the year, the calendar year that we're in now is supposedly going to wind up their time as they're known. And they'll, they'll probably be traveling out of Nashville doing some concerts and things, mm -hmm. but it may not be the same makeup as what people know now. So we were very fortunate to be able to book Jim Quick and Coastline this year <laughs> and have them uh, to be with us uh, on Thursday, June 20th. And they do a, a, a genre of music that is referred to as Swamp Soul. Swamp Soul, yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out. I mean, yeah. I've heard of him before, and he does a great job and draws a big crowd, but you know, I'd never really thought about it as Swamp Soul. <laughs> I, I hadn't either. It's, uh, you know, they, uh, Jim Quick and Coastline, they, they play R&B, they play Top 40, they play... Uh, uh, you know, your, your traditional beach music songs, and they play contemporary songs. It's kind of all over the place. Mm -hmm. But it, but uh, Jim Quick's voice, he's got that, he's got that swamp soul sound exactly, to it. So exactly. uh, that's always a fun band. And you know, our very first concert series we had with, with Alive After Five, they were the opening band seven years ago. So we're we're glad that, that as they are departing the the scene is touring as, as that band, we're very excited to be able to have them back on the series this year. And that's going to be June 20th, so for folks that probably may be their last envoy here, you, if you want to come out, you need to go ahead and put that on your calendar for June 20th right. and be here and come on out at 5.30 and, and, just remember, and get set up. And it's free. Yeah, absolutely. It doesn't cost Can't you anything. Price. If you can get to town and if you don't even have a lawn chair, you can just squat down somewhere yeah, if you right. want to and see it. Yep, and uh, on we we skip the summer, we skip July and August because of the extreme heat, mm -hmm. and then but in September on September nineteenth we come back with what what is one of the all time favorites each year, and and I think there's only been one year we didn't have this band in the lineup mm -hmm. uh, since we started, which is the band of Oz. Uh, that, you know, Keith Houston and David Hicks, those guys started the band years and years ago, and they've been touring strong ever since. Started part-time in 1967. That's correct. God, and, it uh, seems like a long time ago. And, uh, you know, they, uh, Keith lives up in Dunn, and David lives on the outskirts of Raleigh, and uh, but they're just a fun band, and they're great guys to be around, and, uh, and, and, the, and the crowd always loves the Band of Oz. They, they're almost one of those bands that they react to the mood of the of the right. moment, whatever that is, they they'll move with. It. If they can't get you tapping your toes, you must be. You, <laughs> you might as well go to the house. Yeah, you? yeah, you might be able to go <laughs> to check in with the funeral home. I tell you. <laughs> uh, and then to close out the season this year, we're having a band that we had last year, uh, which we had. I think JW, it would be safe to say we had as much response to have this band back as any we've had. And one of the most unusual names. And, and the name of the band is Too Much Sylvia. Um, now with this group, they play all over the place too, different types of music. It's, there's no set uh, genre they perform in, and it's a, it's a multitude of different uh, music, musical styles. And even you might see ZZ Top come out with his beard. It mm -hmm. might be part, he might be part of the group that day. I just don't know. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but they're a very fun band. It's a four-piece band. 
But the thing it, that struck me when I saw him last year is that for four guys on the stage, it's the biggest sound. You, you would think there's more people performing or more yeah. instruments, whatever, but yeah. and they were just a ton of fun. Yeah, and, and I have more people that when they hear that we're having too much Sylvia again, somebody will inevitably always ask, how did that happen, and why is there too much Sylvia, and is there something behind that name? And, and I don't know that I, there is. I don't know. I mean, I guess some of these things is just kind of well, one thing probably don't have any <laughs> great meaning, but I'm sure it's... Well, one of the things, if, if for those of you listening, if you'll tune in to or go visit AliveAfter5ClintonNC.com, one of the things on our website, we have information about the groups, but we also have links to the artist's website, so you can click there. There's video that you can see about the upcoming bands that are going to mm -hmm. be playing, and then, and then there's just there's a ton of information on the on the website at aliveafter5clintonnc.com, and so uh, it's it's unique to to go back and view the statistics on the website and see the links at where people visit, and and uh, last year when we had them, they were I think our first show last year, the number of people that had clicked through their link. To find out more about them was it was one of the highest numbers we've had. So, uh, but but I invite everyone to go to the website and just and learn more about the whole season. And uh, you can see photographs from past concerts. You can and and as of this coming Monday, you'll be able to see the list of all the sponsors for the for the 2019 season. They'll be posted on Monday. It's it's interesting too what you said is if you go to the website you can see all this but since 2014 too much Sylvia this man has received five Cami Awards which is a very coveted award is presented by the Carolina Beach Music Association uh, including two for Song of the Year so again when I when I'm looking at these bands I look at the website I think about it and I think wow this is this is something that. Uh, goes beyond a question of whether I should come out or not. It's a matter of just taking your calendar as we're talking. Uh, if you're listening to this show or you're watching this on Channel 16, just take your calendar right now and, and start mocking these events. We'll try to go over them again. I thought a comment uh, Jim Quick made was, uh, and this is supposedly a quote he said, he said, I want my music to be a bridge for many genres, a place where the traditional contemporary music uh, unites, but I do love the pure emotion and simple yet but deep concepts of roots music. And, and I'm thinking, I don't know, but that sounds like a lot of <laughs> that sounds like a lot of uh, uh, kicking over uh, clods of dirt somewhere. You know what I'm saying? This <laughs> exactly. this guy definitely a country boy, as he says. Yeah, and uh, it, it, it's going to be a great season, great lineup, uh, and I, I just this is I'm look I'm really looking forward to this season, uh, and and I I can't say enough to thank the sponsors. Uh, there's too many to try to name here now. Uh, but uh, there will be some billboards placed downtown Clinton that will list those sponsors. They are on our website, and they'll be recognized at the events. And uh, but there's a lot of fun to be had by coming out. And uh, and I would strongly encourage you to come out to the Alive After Five Summer Concert Series. And uh, again, it's presented by the City of Clinton, uh, Sampson County, and the Sampson Arts Council. Absolutely, and, uh, and, the, and the first one's coming up uh, very quick here, May 16, that's Thursday, May 16, you'll notice here on Thursday is kind of continuity here. Third and Thursday of each month. There you go, <clears throat> uh, spare change, uh, then Jim Quick, very quickly, June 20th, right around the corner, then Band of Oz, the September, as you said, you missed those extremely hot months, and then boom, we're in we're in October. My gracious, October 17, too much, too much Sylvia. Sylvia. So it's four uh, named, uh, award-winning, unbelievable bands you see in Myrtle Beach and everywhere else around the country. And JW, one thing we don't need to forget is we need to give a huge thank you and shout out to all the Live After Five committee members. Uh, there's a Live After Five committee made up of about, I think it's 11 members. And they, they work tirelessly to, to raise the money, to, to set up the day of the event. And, uh, and I'd like to, to, to go on record as officially thanking them for their, for their service uh, to the community and to the concert series, because we definitely could not do it without them. You're on the committee and have been for a while, and, and thank you for what you do, and thank you for helping us promote the event. 
Well, Star Telephone has, uh, and Star Communications has been involved, I think, from the beginning with this. Yep. So I got to give them a shout out as well. Um, the, the input of all of these major industries, including Smithfield Food and others, we could just go down the list. As you said, we don't have time to name everybody. To include all those $250 uh, sponsors that step up and say, listen, I'm going I'm to just write this check. And, and when they do that, to me, it says, I want to be part owner in this. So well, if you own it, you're going to represent it. And that's right. And what it is, you know, the, the folks that sponsor, uh, J.D., but what I have found is the folks that are sponsoring the series are are sponsoring the series because they, they want to enhance and improve the quality of life across it in the county. Mm -hmm. So, you know, by having cultural events and, and, and concerts and things like this, uh, people, uh, I, I'd say that during my time with the Arts Council in the, over the past 10 or 15 years, the, the amount of time and energy that, that folks recognize that and value and place importance on the arts and what it means in the community is, is just tenfold. Again, Bray, thank you for being with us. We're going to have to uh, go for a closure here now as uh, the show goes fast. Ladies and gentlemen, be sure to be there. First show, May 16. We'll see you there. I want to thank Ray Jordan for being with us today. And as always, thank you for being with us and allowing us to come in your home and uh, talk with you each and every week at Tuesday is at 2.30. We'll see you again and may God bless. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of We Should Know with host J.W. Simmons. If you have a question, comment, or suggestion regarding this or any episode, please send your emails to we should know edu at gmail.com. And remember to tune in every Tuesday at 2.30 for another informative episode of We Should Know.